Devotees. Thanks for stopping by. It's I, I always enjoy the company. And um, today it is kind of overcast. Yesterday we had kind of a, a little bit of a sunny day. But today there are overcast clouds. But I can see Scouters Mountain, which um, a few days this week was it was so foggy here that you couldn't even tell that there that it was there. It was like non-existent. Um, but today I can see it in all its glory. And no blue sky though. No blue sky. I have been um, a little bit on fire here in the beehive. And part of that is because last week... I had um, some cross-stitchy friends over uh, for a, a little day of stitching and lunch, um, which I will share all that on my Stitch Roadie um, channel. And I know that I have said before that sometimes I wish that I had done everything in one channel, but I didn't. And... Uh, People have said, people have said in the comments, well, you can just mush them together now. But I have to say that it is somewhat helpful for me to have that structure, the two different structures. Now, the Stitch Rody channel will definitely be where I will be doing my crafting stuff because... It, I just have, I don't know, I, I feel like I have more room over there. <laughs> um, but I did, I had um, some cross-stitch friends over uh, for a day of stitching. And um, naturally when someone comes into the beehive, they are looking at all these projects and uh, wondering what the heck is going on. And so I was, like, um, dragging things out and showing. And, and then I found something that I had not realized that um, it's like I totally forgot about it. I totally forgot about it. And since it was a Christmas or holiday uh, project, I thought I should just quilt that up. And it was a table runner, and I'm... I don't know the pattern. It's a simple, simple pattern. You don't really even need a pattern to do this. The fabric line, I have no memory of. It looks to me like a moda, um, but it was a table runner. Um, look at how pretty that is. Very simple and very pretty. Kind of a little bit of a modern bent to it. So after they left, after my friends left, I said, I'm, I'm going to, this week, um, layer that up and quilt it well. I still have the Christmas vibe going on. And so I chose some fabric uh, from my stash, uh, kind of a Christmas-themed uh, green to put on the back. I used fusible batting. And the way I do this is because... With as much manipulation as I do when I'm quilting, sometimes that fusible batting will um, like lift a little bit, if you know what I mean. So my modus operandi is to layer whatever I'm quilting up, and then I um, quilted around and around just to anchor it all down. And then I took just like an eighth inch, barely an eighth inch, all the way around so that it was together. So then I could do the fun stuff. And that can be, uh, that process can be quite um, laborious as one decides how they want to quilt something. What helps me is I go on to Pinterest and I... Um, search for um, free motion quilt patterns because I mostly, I have a lot of templates. I need to get those out and be using those. But for this project, I decided I just wanted a free motion. 
and so I did, you can see some of it on the back there, and, and what I did was I just drew a line with chalk, and then I just free motion to that line, and uh, so I kind of did a wreath pattern in, uh, if you can see that, a wreath pattern in the uh, O's, because this kind of, I only saw the O's, but it is an X, X's and O's pattern, and uh, it's very, I, I really uh, am enjoying it, and I'm enjoying that, um, that satisfaction that comes with accomplishing something, because that is my uh, biggest bugaboo is to direct that fire in the right direction. And by showing, uh, pulling out projects that were in process and showing my cross stitcher friends these projects, it made me all over uh, ready to get something out of the way so then I can start something new. You know what I mean? Start something new. So I have a great desire to get um, uh, some wool stitching done so that I can start new wool stitching. And I know I've signed up, oh, I'm just green with envy right now. I've signed up for um, Sue Spargo's Block of the Month starting in um, 2021, 2022. Oh my, I just, uh, my the landscaper uh, it, that does this whole neighborhood is here, you know, and he's blowing the leaves. And uh, it's a thankless job. It's a thankless job because <laughs> the leaves are just falling, falling, falling. So what was I talking about? Oh, Sue Spargo, um, block of the month. Oh, I cannot wait. I am really, um, going to try to maybe not stay totally up each month, but really try to give it a good effort on, um, that block of the month and I have several others that are in process and I'm uh, I'm just really looking forward to it but if you follow Sue Spargo um, on Instagram right now she's on a river cruise uh, with um, a retreat group uh, a stitching retreat group that signed up for that river cruise and Currently, they are in uh, Budapest, which is one of my favorite cities. I absolutely loved Budapest. Um, it wasn't, at least back when I went, um, it wasn't as touristy as Prague. So, um, yeah, I kind of really enjoyed myself there. I went to a, um, now I can't remember if it was in Prague or Budapest. I went to a cemetery that was amazing. I mean, the headstones are very personalized to um, the person whose final resting place was there. And uh, like uh, a ballerina would have a 3D stone ballerina. It it was uh, truly extraordinary, truly extraordinary. Um, so I was kind of green when I saw that the group is in Budapest. That is one of my favorite, favorite cities. I lucked out because in the, uh, the cross, my, my girlfriends in the cross stitch group that came to my house, um, I had taught, um, or I don't think I could even say taught, I had supported, emotionally supported, one of them for her first journey into wool. And um, 
so she's now enjoying, uh, of course she does everything. She does everything, you know, all kinds of crafty things. And, and um, so she showed up that day and forgot the pattern that she was going to cross stitch, the actual chart. So she didn't have anything to do. So I said, well, you can stitch some wool for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was so awesome. And, and so I handed her the circle and she stitched this for me, stitched it down. I just have to add uh, some of the embellishment stuff like the eye on the dove and then I will put the back on here and just stitch a, a blanket stitch or a buttonhole stitch around the edge and then I will have February done for the home pillow and um, I hope you got your stitching out because I have my stitching out. I'm currently now going to be working on March but um, what I wanted to show you was, you know, how I did this home pillow. Okay, so I, it's really a wall hanging that I have turned into a pillow for my bench. Well, um, I asked my girlfriend, who's already made two, uh, two of these, full sets, mind you, how she attached these to the O. And she said she did it with Velcro. And I was telling her, well, the Velcro doesn't seem to hold it very well. And she said, well, what are you using? And I said, I'm using that little dot thing. And she says, oh, no, that's not going to work. You need something a little bit stronger. So I went and got the strips because that's what she used. And then she gave me her template. Now, this is an amazing idea. So she made one template and knew right where she needed to put one side of the Velcro and then cut out for the other side of the Velcro. It's absolutely genius. So she gave me her template. So this is a good idea to do. Um, if you want to use Velcro. Um, but now I'm going to uh, pretty much have this project uh, on schedule this year because uh, I'm already um, uh, the one that's on there is January uh, I have February's that I just have to do the outside edge and I am stitching on marches the, the clover and St. Patty's Day and all of that I watched a, a great, not a great, but a good movie. You know, we all, a lot of us, are on the Christmas movie kick um, because, after all, it is December. And uh, so, when I was sitting here sewing, I have my laptop here. I wanted to um, watch a holiday movie. I just, I needed um, to have something uplifting and I'm not a real fan I have to say I'm not a real fan of the Hallmark movies they're just I don't know I hate to be judgmental maybe maybe we do need cheesy in this world maybe I do need cheesy but it's not my go-to holiday movie but I decided to take a risk on this one that was on Netflix. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I think the reason, the reason I enjoyed it, and I suggest it uh, for you, are threefold. The name of the movie is Love Hard. And what I liked about it is that the main character, the male main character, was a short, somewhat short in stature, um, Asian guy. I mean, he could be a relative. <laughs> but he was, a, um, he wasn't that 
beefy prince that suddenly, or the billionaire who suddenly, um, you know, swoops in to save Christmas and the the female lead. This was a, a lovely story, and it was different. And the reason it was called Love Hard, which also sold me on it, was that the, uh, one of the characters' favorite movie was Love Actually, that Christmas movie, which is one of my favorite. Uh, Love Actually is one that I watch every year. And so there was the word love. And then um, there was a discussion in the movie about whether Die Hard was a Christmas movie. <laughs> And so there's the word hard, love hard. Oh, I, I really enjoyed it. So if you want something that um, uh, has a little bit more meat than uh, the, the princess or the prince in Christmas or something a little bit different that way, uh, I, would I, I would recommend this as uh, a little different diversion than the, your cookie cutter. Uh, it wasn't quite as cookie cutter. One of the things I've noticed, oh, I'm just babbling here. I need to stitch while I'm babbling. Uh, but one of the things I was telling G, you know, um, we've been ordering a lot online. And so what I've noticed going up, because my perch, I'm like in this little nest, in this little hive high up, um, because my house doesn't sit level to the street. So the house already is not level to the street, so it's up. And then this, then I'm on the second story in the beehive. So I get this view, this panoramic kind of view of what's going on on the street. I see all the dog walkers, I see the exercise runners, I see all the landscape people, but what I really see are the delivery people. Now, used to be there was just Amazon and UPS. And they didn't come every day. But now with COVID, oh my gosh, the, the delivery of Amazon and UPS is nonstop. And then there's FedEx. And then there's a whole new delivery person uh, with a big, big truck called Material Movers or something like that. So it's like there's not enough between FedEx, Amazon, and UPS. There's not enough drivers or trucks to deliver everything. So then they are outsourced. And twice yesterday, this guy drove up in his own car. I'm telling you, it's like a, a Corolla. Uh, his own car. And he has all kinds of packages in his car, stuffed in the back seat and in the, in, in the passenger seat and the trunk. And on the s door of his own car is like a, a magnetic uh, sticker, or magnetic logo for UPS. Yeah, that it's it's kind of interesting. So when you think about what has changed in the last year, that would be one of the changes that has happened. Gas prices going up, <laughs> navigating the medical system, never getting out of a grocery store for under a hundred dollars, and. Now the UPS driver is in his own car. <laughs> and the other thing is, at least around here, I don't know if it's that way um, everywhere, but porch pirates would not um, be able to exist here because as soon as that Amazon deliver, delivery guy drops a thing on your front porch, he takes a picture of it, and you get a message on your phone that there's a package in, at your front door. 
yeah. You know. So that is different. They're finally trying to figure out how to get around all of that. I'm using on this particular one, I, I didn't find a green in my Valdani that I particularly liked. So I'm just using um, two strands of regular green floss for my shamrocks. I'll use, I'll use DMC for my wool stitching. I'll use whatever thread I have that the color is the one I want. So, so what are you guys doing, huh? I've heard from about half of the winners of the 12 days, uh, or 12, 12 days in one day <laughs> giveaway. So I've heard about from about half of them. And um, so I hope I hear from the other half. I have, um, I had a Zoom yesterday with the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show, which, um, you know, you can, you can be a supporter, uh, a financial supporter of the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. They're a nonprofit, and, um, so they, I'll put a link in the description box if you are so moved to, to help or help some quilt shows survive this period of time. But the um, guest speaker on the Zoom was a gentleman who is not only a quilter, but he's a professional musician. And um, so he, and he lives, he actually lives here in the Portland area. And, um, so he shared his quilts, and uh, I just really enjoyed it. I I kind of like Zoom. I can't wait till I can go to um, the quilt shop, Pioneer Quilts, and meet up with the stitching group. Just because I I think I think it would be good for my mental health. Um, left to my own devices. I would just sit up here and watch the world. Um, I think, though, it might be, um, you know, it might be better to actually <laughs> interact personally <laughs> with people. I got a little box, not a little, there was quite a bit of chocolate, but I got a box of C's candy from the So Yeah Brothers. I was like shocked. And oh, who does not love C's candy? So that was a real treat yesterday. I'm waiting for a package. I wonder if it's because I'm like, you know, kind of like you... <laughs> Kind of like you get points because, you know, I used to get a lot of points when I'd fly with certain airlines because I flew so much. Maybe maybe this is because there's some point system at the So Yeah Brothers in Las Vegas for fabric buying. Although I think my friend Irene might have surpassed me. Um, she was even wearing a t-shirt, a So Yeah Brothers t-shirt. That is, that's a total crack up. That's a total crack up. And they're doing the, they're doing floss, flossmas 12 days um, on YouTube of um, Christmas sales and stuff. I'm hoping to get on there today um, and see what they have. But I am expecting a couple of, um, a couple more backing fabrics. <laughs> Yeah, I've got my whole back. I now have a little pile of backing shelf. I uh, I cannot recommend enough that book, The Power of Bad. Uh, that was a huge... Um, uh, it was a huge eye-opener... There, I was comforted by the knowledge in it. Uh, 
And that may sound weird, but I, I, I think every person should read that. You know, there's a lot to be learned. This is so cute. Yeah, I have a Yoko Saito um, wool block of the month that I did with um, Lisa Bongian in Primitive Gatherings that I really want to get done. I think it's going to be a beautiful quilt and I really want it want it done. I sent off a quilt um, to my sister in um, North Dakota because she moved to North Dakota for a majority of the year and um, boy postage is enough to make you cringe. I could not believe uh, how much postage was. Oh, and I forgot, let me just show you. I uh, placed an order with Buttermilk Basin, and that came yesterday. Now, um, these won't be started right away because, um, you know, I'm already in the Christmas brain. You know, I'm in the Christmas brain. But I just thought it was so adorable that I bought the kit for this little... Is that not the cutest little thing? It's a mat. And the outside of the mat is the edge of the pumpkins. Um, and it's not big. It's only nine and a half inches around. So it is just the cutest little mat. And, and, and it came as a kit, so I got that wool. Everything that's uh, I can tell that the wool that those pumpkins are sitting on is the exact wool in this kit. That is so cute. So cute. So I got that. I, Because I was in the Christmas mood, I couldn't pass up this yummy, yummy wool. I, I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I do know that I needed it. I needed it desperately. And I thought this was so beautiful that I wanted it. Yeah, and it won't be started till next year sometime because it is a fall. Um, so Stacy uh, Buttermilk Basin, she has an event called Woolstock. I was not able to attend it, but apparently this was the pattern, the fall pattern for Woolstock. And, um, oh, it's just so pretty. So I bought the kit. It's Woolstock Floral Fall. And it came with everything. And my guess is that's, um, it's a much larger mat. Probably the size, this probably is similar in size to my ugly sweater mat. Oh, I should have brought that up to share with you. I finished that thing. It's sitting down on the table downstairs. That'll have to be for next time. I been pondering and um, finally decided on my word for 2022, which I will share later this month. I have thought about it a lot and have determined what I want to um, progress through 2022 with. So if any of you are also a word of the year person, now's the time to really be thinking about what word you want to, you know, remind yourself with or enjoy in 2022. 
What else? Do I have anything else? I don't think so. I think I need to get back to my quilting on the table runner. Um, my middle grandson will be spending overnight tomorrow night with us, so there won't be much stitching going on there. And uh, it is a blessed life, for sure. It is a blessed life. So you all take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you, thank you for hanging out with me. Um, please, if you get an opportunity to subscribe and like on the video, we always appreciate that. Be safe out there, take care of yourself, and know that you are perfection. Mm -hmm.